All right, chapter nine, uh, multivariate correlational research. So multivariate uh, correlational research is actually very common. It's a very commonly used statistical technique. Um, what we're trying to do with multivariate designs is at least get closer to establishing causation. They don't technically establish causation, but they at least get you closer to it. So remember the three criteria are covariance, temporal precedence, and internal validity. Okay, so multivariate designs, uh, they can at least help you get at the uh, temporal precedence by using um, longitudinal designs if you're doing that. The uh, uh, multiple regression at least gets you uh, better or closer to internal validity because you're addressing third variables. You can eliminate the influence of some third variables um, and at least get closer to um, causality, a causal claim. Okay? So what are longitudinal studies? Um, that's a study with multiple time points. Um, so sometimes these are across a long time span, like um, throughout someone's adult lifetime, or maybe you start with adolescence and then um, measure them as adults, or maybe it's just over the course of a few weeks or a few months, um, making multiple measurements over time. Okay. So here's an example from your textbook. Um, this is excessive praise for children, uh, uh, giving children excessive praise, that's overvaluation, so we have a self-report of that, um, or an observational report, um, and then a report for uh, narciss narcissism. Okay. So these are correlations uh, between uh, just within one time point uh, between those two measures. Okay, so these are cross-sectional. So a cross-sectional design or cross-sectional study that is just measuring one time point. Okay, just taking a cross-section of a relationship. Okay, at one time point. Okay, so these are then correlated. Now these may look small, but um, they are uh, statistically significant. Um, so it's weak, but it's there. Um, now, this is interesting, but not, not super exciting, or at least this doesn't really help too much with internal validity because this does not establish temporal precedence. Okay, so um, usually in a longitudinal study, when you're trying to get at temporal precedence and get closer to establishing causation, then this isn't all that interesting. Correlation is, is there, it's weak, but it's, it's there at each time point, um, and it doesn't seem to really change. Okay, these are the autocorrelations, these are the R values for that. As you can see, they're much stronger, as you would anticipate. So this isn't um, between the two variables um, at a particular time point, but this is correlations between um, the same variable, but at different time points. So overvaluation at time one is strongly correlated with overvaluation at time two. So basically all this tells you is that over time, these traits or these behaviors seem to be fairly consistent. Again, this isn't really all that exciting. Usually this isn't exactly really the meat of what the researcher is looking for. Okay, but this is um, where you can get um, get at more of the temporal the temporal precedence. Okay, so here is overvaluation time two, and it's correlation with narcissism at time, or sorry, at time one here, and then it's correlation with narcissism at time two. Okay, so um, one variable correlated with the other, and at one at time one correlated with time two. Okay, so these are called cross lags, okay, and you can see they're weak again, but they are there. The NS stands for non-significant. So because these cross lags are significant going this direction, with overvaluation first, narcissism second, and the narcissism and overvaluation not being significant, this suggests that the overvaluation come first, comes first, and then next in time comes um, the narcissism. Okay. So uh, longitudinal designs. Um, so you've got the covariance, that's just the correlation. Um, temporal precedence, uh, you can get that from the cross-like correlations. Um, internal validity. Um, to do that, you really need to measure other variables um, and adjust for them, which we'll talk about in the second part of this lecture. Okay. Um, so when you do that, um, it does help. Um, still, even then, you're not 
um, fully, you know, fully have internal validity to the point that you could definitively conclude causation. Okay, um, and there are plenty of longitudinal designs that don't rule out third variables, um, and so they they don't really have. They're not even getting very close to internal validity. Okay? Um, but uh, temporal precedence, uh, covariance, you can have those. Okay? Um, now, we've talked about before, experiments are really the gold standard for establishing causality. Um, why bother doing all this cross-leg stuff if you can just do an experiment? Well, there are plenty of questions that you can't answer with uh, experiments. Plenty of variables that you can't just randomly assign a participant to. And sometimes maybe you could in theory, but um, it would be unethical. So um, that's why longitudinal designs can be um, valuable to at least get closer. So that's the end.